Uh, Stein said that the Mavericks couldn't get any traction on a Dragic trade, which sounds a little bit definitive. Like, sounds a little bit like it's kind of over. Sounds a little bit like the talks have either ceased, stalled, or are not really ongoing at the moment. Uh, he did say it in the green room, so it's not like it's a report. It's not like he put it out there. But to me, it's interesting because what if the Mavericks can't get Dragic? And what if the Raptors don't buy him out? Then what do the Mavericks do? Or should they wait? Yeah, I think that's the dilemma they're probably going to be in, if not already, that if Toronto's saying, hey, we have this expiring contract of $19 million, why don't, like, we're just hold on to it unless you're going to give up assets. We've covered that a million times. But if you're Dallas and you're saying, okay, that, that was our pivot from Lowry or anyone else, like that was our pivot at, to our secondary creator in Dragic, but now you might not get him because, yeah, I don't think Toronto's going to buy him out, but I think there's a good chance that the other team will buy him out. Whatever deal that they put him in to go get someone else and he goes to whatever team, insert whatever team, and they're like, okay, let's work out the buyout, then there's a good chance that then he's going to come to Dallas in, at the you know trade deadline. So, But if you're Dallas, can you wait until then to get Goran Dragic for free? That's the dilemma I think they're in. Not that it, because if not, then it is okay. Well, do we have to go get another creator th now? Like, do we have to go to try go go around the league and try to find another guy? Or is it like if they pull off a marketing trade over the next day or so, then they're like, okay, you know, like we're gonna bring marketing off the bench with Brunson, whoever. I think we can like keep the ship afloat and then just try to bank on try to get Dragic for free around the deadline. That's still, you're still taking a chance, but yeah. It goes back to the question, why do the Mavericks need a secondary creator in, to begin with? And how badly do they need one, right? And so then that that, le that leads you to, okay, well, are they just getting Dragic because it's a fit because he wants to come here? Or are they, they really do need a secondary creator and they need it for a specific reason? And I think there's a bunch of reasons. The, one of the reasons, take some load off of Luka. Some of that is in the regular season, that they need to take some some of the load off of Luka so that he's more fresh for the playoffs, so that he does he can be more fresh for fourth quarters and things like that. I think that that is definitely a thing, especially coming off of this Olympic run and all that. Uh, partying with Boban after you know after signing that massive contract, he's going to need some, some help and some support there. I think another reason is to kind of – like boost Porzingis a little bit. I think they need that secondary creator with him to try and get him going. I think he needs that type of a point guard to try and help him. And so if you look at that and you say, okay, well, they do need him. They need, do need this guy during the regular season. And it will take some time, I think, for this Mavericks team to get used to a secondary creator if he's going to have the type of volume that will be effective for the Mavericks and will actually make it worth it. If he's going to have a usage percentage that's maybe higher than Tim Hardaway Jr.'s, then all of a sudden that's, that's a guy you have to fold in like – if you're folding in the cheese in a recipe, like it's gonna take time. You just gotta fold that cheese in. If you've watched, uh, if you've watched Shit's Creek, like fold in the cheese. Keep folding in the folding the cheese. Uh, how do you do that? It just says it. You know, you just fold it. You fold it in the cheese. That's one of my favorites. I thought you just made up that analogy, and I'm like, uh, that could be a weird no. analogy, but Moira and her son, who's David, who's who's a uh, name I almost forgot. Uh, we're, we're making this recipe and it just said fold in the cheese and Moira just kept reading fold in the cheese over and over and over again. And he's like, but that's not telling me what fold means. <laughs> he's like, I don't understand. So the Mavericks are going to need to fold in this secondary creator. And it's, it's going to take a while, I think, to make it seamless, to make it work, to get the, you know, the vibe, to get the, you know, the chemistry and everything, which chemistry matters for the Mavericks. And so um, can they, can they afford to wait? Unless... <laughs> It's like, hey, we don't have to. We don't have to take. We don't have to worry about the timing part because it's Dragic. He already has the chemistry. And with, yeah, it's just, it doesn't matter. Which that factors into it. <laughs> and and if they if they feel like this is mainly a postseason problem and not a regular season problem, if right. they're looking at it saying, okay, we know we need a secondary creator in the playoffs because we don't want Luca just being completely gassed in the fourth. We need more offense. But if they're looking at it saying, uh, yeah, Luca. The whole, you know, Brunson, these guys, like we can, we can make do in the regular season and win a lot of basketball games. I could see that mindset, but let's just say, let's just do the what if. What if Dallas says, okay, Dragic, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. If it does, there's a small chance that it happens at the deadline and it's for free. It's after he gets bought out. There's a lot of things that still has to happen at that point. And even if it does happen, then cool, you can, you're going to get him for free, even if you go out and get another creator now. So it, are there other creators around the league 
that are in that same ballpark of expiring contracts, bigger expirings. It doesn't cut into future money that you could go out right now and say, could we put a similar package together for that player? That's where I think if Dallas has to pivot from Dragic now, do they have other options? Because we've also heard from guys like Zach Lowe and others, the Mavericks are going to get their secondary creator. 